Hey guys, Caitlin here, and for this week's episode, I want to talk about lower extremity edema and the differential diagnosis that go with that. Um, so this past week, I had a patient come in with the chief complaint of bilateral lower extremity edema. Um, she also had other complaints of shortness of breath on exertion and fatigue with the history of chronic AFib. And so in my mind, I'm naturally thinking this is going to be a new diagnosis of congestive heart failure. Um, but it actually didn't end up being the case. So in terms of diagnostic evaluation, I got the basic cardiac workup of troponin, EKG, and chest x-ray, and then I added on that BNP looking for congestive heart failure since that's what this picture looked like. Um, I also added on a urinalysis looking for any infection or proteinuria, and then a TSH to evaluate for hypothyroidism since the patient was complaining of fatigue. Um, and then, of course, I got the basic labs of CBT and BMP to look for any anemia, um, elevated white blood cell count, and electrolytes, especially because the patient was chronic kidney disease stage 4, and she had a fistula placed, but on no dialysis quite yet. So when I got her lab broke back, I was actually very surprised by the numbers. Um, her cardiac workup was very benign. Her chest x-ray had a little bit of cardiomegaly, but not too much. Her BMP hadn't jumped from the previous BMP we got, and it was around 200s. It maybe jumped like 50 points. Um, but really what I found was she was super anemic. Uh, her hemoglobin was 5.1, and her creatinine had jumped um, a lot from her baseline. I don't remember the numbers. And um, so in the presence of new anemia and a creatinine bump, I was pretty much sure this patient had worsening chronic kidney disease, which was causing this lower extremity edema um, and this shortness of breath on exertion and fatigue. So for this week's episode, I want to focus on the differential diagnosis of lower extremity edema. Um, and for the sake of time, I just wanted to focus on bilateral low extremity edema uh, because unilateral low extremity edema definitely has its own set of differentials. So let's get started. So when it comes to the differentials of low extremity edema, uh, you can separate it into acute and then chronic cases. So the most common causes of acute low extremity edema are that congestive heart failure exacerbation, um, nephrotic syndrome, medication changes, or bilateral DVTs. Um, and then chronic cases usually are confounded to peripheral vascular disease, lymphedema, uh, kidney failure, liver failure, hypothyroidism, and pulmonary hypertension. So when it comes to congestive heart failure, uh, these patients might have a history of chronic atrial fibrillation or they could have a history of um, MIs in the past and have had stents or cabbages. And their symptoms usually consist of fatigue, shortness of breath, especially on exertion, um, paroxysmal nocturnal dyspnea, and then um, orthopnea, so these patients can't lay flat for too long of time. Um, and then when it comes to the workup, like I said before, always get troponin, EKG, chest x-ray, and then always add on a BNP when you are suspicious for congestive heart failure. So this is a typical chest x-ray of a patient in a congestive heart failure exacerbation. Um, so you'll definitely see the cardiomegaly, so that's the increased cardiothoracic ratio. Um, you'll see a lot of just edema in their chest wall, so that can manifest in pleural fusions, curly B lines, or the cephalization of the vasculature there. So this is another patient in a congestive heart failure exacerbation. Um, you can see the cardiomegaly, uh, pulmonary edema is seen here with a cloudy appearance of both lobes, as well as blunting of the right costophrenic angle, probably from a little portal fusion. This is a classic picture of JVD seen in heart failure. Uh, JVD can indicate how much blood is flowing back into your heart and how well your heart can move that blood into your lungs and to the rest of the body. JVD is a more sensitive sign of right-sided heart failure. So when it comes to another cause of acute bilateral low extremity edema, um, nephrotic syndrome should be on your differential. Um, this will cause an extreme case of um, a dimitous state in the body. So sometimes the edema can go up into the arms as well and into the face as well. Um, I'll show a picture of that in a second. And then these patients will have a lot of proteinuria, hypoalbuminemia, and then hyperlipidemia. As you can see here, this is periorbital edema that I mentioned before. Nephrotic syndrome in children manifests as minimal change disease. 
So these children will have severe edema all throughout the body, uh, specifically the periorbital area seen here. So two other causes of that acute case of the lower extremity edema are medication changes and bilateral DVTs. So medications like calcium channel blockers um, are the most common cause of medication-induced lower extremity edema. Other causes like vasodilators like hydralazine, minoxidil, or sometimes uh, steroid um, induced lower extremity edema, so glucocorticoid steroids, fluidocorticoid, um, and even estrogen, progesterone, testosterone. Um, and then that bilateral DVTs is usually fairly uncommon. Um, usually DVTs present with unilateral lower extremity edema, um, but it, you can have bilateral DVTs, so uh, suspect this in patients that ha have high wells and per criteria um, and in patients that have a new onset of malignancy in their body. So when it comes to some of the chronic causes of lower extremity edema, um, peripheral vascular disease is the most common cause in this area, and these patients will just have a history of uh, leg pain when they stand for too long, um, they could have some varicose veins, or they could have those uh, skin changes associated with PVD, which is called stasis dermatitis. Another cause of chronic lower extremity edema is simply lymphedema, and uh, you can uh, differentiate this from other causes, um, and that is not a true edematous state. Uh, these patients will complain of lower extremity edema, but it will be non-pitting in nature. And another cause of non-pitting edema is that mixed edema that you see in Graves' disease. Um, so again, these patients will have a non-pitting lower extremity swelling, um, and if they have Graves' disease, they might have other symptoms like dry skin, fatigue, thinning hair, um, or constipation. Some of the last causes of that chronic lower extremity edema um, are some organ failures. So kidney and liver failure can both cause lower extremity edema. Um, liver failure is most commonly associated with that ascites. Um, and then a lot of people forget about kidney failure causing a lot of lower extremity edema and just uh, edema overall in their body since their kidneys cannot filter out all the excess waste and fluid from their body. Um, and then pulmonary hypertension can be a cause of lower extremity edema. Um, usually uh, these patients are having trouble sleeping at night, so they have sleep apnea causing pulmonary hypertension. So these patients will present with lower extremity edema, uh, fatigue during the day, um, they might be a snore at night, and uh, their partner could have been catching them during the night uh, having periods of apnea. So just keep that on your differential for chronic lower extremity edema. Thank you.